Are you making any of these mistakes right now and will you be able to create better images after this video? Probably. Let's find out. Top 7 mistakes people make. I've been dabbling with AI and art for some time now and I get a lot of questions on how it works and how to get better images. So I figured I'd make a little list of what I believe are the 7 most common mistakes that people make in Stable Diffusion. Some of these are easy fixes, but one will totally change your results for the better. Oh, and today I have 3 dad jokes for you. Let me know in the comments which one you thought was the best one. Prompting. Generally, people come to Stable Diffusion and have tried tools like Midjourney, where a good image can be had with a very simple prompt. Stable Diffusion is a little different in that regard. It's harder to get a good image, but you also have more control. So most of the time, you need a more complete prompt. And think like a computer and not like a human. Skip those filler words. Instead of painting of a cat in a hat, you're going to need to expand that to something like cat in a hat, painting, Picasso, Rembrandt, Derek Zabocchi, concept art, cinematic blue lighting. Add as much detail to your prompts as you can and the AI will understand you much better. Remember, the AI is creating an image. It doesn't know what beautiful image is if you don't tell it. And throw some artists in there while you're at it. Oh, by the way, do you know why artists stay cool all the time? They have many fans. Missing denoising strength in image to image. Many of the values and settings in Stable Diffusion can be quite challenging to grasp at first. If you follow a good tutorial like my ultimate guide on Stable Diffusion, linked, oh, that corner, you'll get a good grasp of what's going on. Still, image to image is one of the most important tools and it can be challenging to get right if you don't understand denoising strength. Zero will make no changes to your image and one will completely change it. Make sure you find a middle ground. Start high and work your way downwards as you keep iterating your image until you have your final result. A rule of thumb could be something like um, start with 0.7 to make larger changes, then move down to 0.4 when you're close to what you want. After that, you should be very close to your perfect result. Not giving the AI enough time. I get it, you're busy, you want a perfect image straight away. But to get that in stable diffusion, you're going to need to give the AI some time to work with you. What the AI can create is very much up to the seed. It's almost like, uh, it's almost like the pieces to a puzzle. You might have the best prompt in the world, but you still might need to run that for 4, 8, even 16 images to be close to what you're looking for. And after that, several more in image to image. Start with many images to choose from, move on to image to image, and work in steps. Baby steps forward and you will get what you're looking for. Hey, just a quick intermission here. If you like this content and want the algorithm to show you more, make sure to like and subscribe. That is really going to help me out. Thanks guys. Copying settings. Now, don't get me wrong, you should copy settings. Try everything, borrow and learn from the best. Find good looking images and copy those to adapt to your own style. But don't expect that what worked for someone else in another style is going to work for your style. Copy settings, test what changing things does to your image and take it from there. Learn the tools you can copy and adapt to what you want. Oh, speaking of adapting, my poker playing friend has this new uh, prosthetic arm, but um, he's having a hard time dealing with it. Not copying settings. Are you stuck in the same old rut making anime waifus that keep filling up your hard drive and they basically all look the same? Yeah. Take some inspiration from other creators, check out what they're doing and what they use in their prompts. I guarantee that you will find new ways to incorporate others' ideas into your own workflow. Perhaps you can input uh, photography lenses into that anime waifu prompt. Or, um, or lighting modes that are generally used for film. Try everything. Messing with the resolution. So this is a tricky one. Stable Diffusion works best in 512 by 512 but except for Instagram it's not really a very usable format. I get it, you want your image in a different resolution. You want it horizontal, vertical, maybe full HD, 1080. Yeah, that might be an issue. Now I said 512 by 512 works best but uh, you can still create horizontal and vertical images. But stick to the low resolution stuff. Do you want horizontal? Go for something like um, 640 by 384. Then upscale it 
four times in extras and you're gonna have your high resolution image. But whenever you move away from the square format, expect to run more batches of images because the images will be weirdly cropped, especially if you're creating images of people. Multiple hands, anyone? No, only me? All right, forgetting restore faces. I see a lot of AI images, a lot of them. Some are fantastic, but the majority of them lack one thing, good looking eyes. Now it is an issue with stable diffusion and for high resolution, it's still not perfect, but most people out there can improve their faces and eyes and images by 10 times. Go into the settings, activate Codeformer as your face restoration model, and whenever you render people, check that restore faces box. Bonus time! All right, yeah, so there's one more mistake I wanna talk about, and whenever people find a good prompt or a good image and a result that they, they like, they tend to uh, forget the settings. And there's actually two ways to retrieve that. So the first one is a setting where you save the text information about the generation parameters inside the PNG file. Sort of like saving the metadata. So then you can take the image, pull that back into a PNG info inside your um, automatic 11.11 and all the settings are going to be there. You're going to see your prompt, you're going to see the steps, the sampler, the scale, um, the seed, the size, even the... If you have upscale it, you're going to see how, how many times you upscaled it and with what upscaler. The second option is you can create a text file next to each image that it has a text file with all the settings. This is saving the exact same settings, just in a different way. These settings can be found in the settings tab in the automatic 1111 on the left side. So just go click those and whenever you, you're trying to retrieve an old prompt or an old setting for an image, you got it. Boom. Yeah, so that was uh, the bonus mistake. So these are my top seven mistakes people make in Stable Diffusion. What mistakes did you first make when starting out? Leave it in the comments below. Oh, I almost forgot. We only did two dad jokes so far and I promised three. So yeah. Oh, so yeah, how about this one? Uh, so the other day my wife saw a spider and my wife told me to, uh, well, take it out uh, instead of killing it. So uh, we went out, had a few drinks. Nice guy. He's a web designer. Anyway, I hope you learned something and had fun. Have a good one. See ya. Oh, here's a reminder. Don't forget to join our community in Discord. Link is in the channel description. Get help and support. Talk AI art or ch just chat with the lovely people. We got Dream Booth expert Maui, Grumpy Finn Healy, Israeli superstar Selico. Clive is always around to make sure everyone feels welcome. Come be a part of our community.